Hi, I'm Declan from DexArt. You may have seen some of my effects or even purchased some of my content on the Reillusion store, which I really appreciate, thank you. I've been an animator of special effects for a long time. I started out at Sullivan Bluth Studios in Ireland, creating effects for Don Bluth and Gary Goleman. I moved to Arizona where I worked as a director for 20th Century Fox Animation, creating titles like Anastasia, Titan AE, and then later I worked on projects for Disney, Marvel, Star Wars games, etc. Very exciting times. In this upcoming video I'm going to show you the process of using transparent video bringing movie clips into CTA 4.5, exporting them and working with them in After Effects. But before I do that, why not check out my content store at Reillusion? You'll find it under DexArt. In there you will find all my animated effects from water, magic, fire. Anyway, go explore. DexArt. Now let's jump in and start animating. So let's bring a live clip uh, that we're going to animate to into the timeline. So we bring it in as a prop. Select our video clip. And this is the clip we're going to be working with to create the animation. I always take the video clip, pop it in the center of the scene. That way then you can uh, move it around and stretch it and stuff. Always make sure that you have your timeline set to zero. Otherwise you're going to have animation on your video clip. Now you can right click this and remove the animation properties and that'll stop that but always make sure you're at zero. You can also stretch your clip left and right, you can rotate it. So you've all the same attributes as you would with any prop but we don't want to do that for this. So make sure that you take it from the edge, stretch it straight out and just line up your video clip. Now I know my clip here is 318 frames long. So I'm just gonna make sure that it's clipped back down to that so the in and out is the actual length of the clip. And here's the animation. Here's what we're going to actually animate to, this girl dancing. Kinda cool. So now that we have the, uh, the movie on the stage, I'm gonna bring in the actor. Uh, I'm gonna use Mia for this. She's a character I created and just drag her on to the stage there and you'll notice that you can do all the same things. She's a, a prop so you can do all the same things that you can do with the movie clip but all I'm going to do right now is line her up and put her in the right position and always make sure that you're on frame zero. So I think for this I'm just going to put me a bit there and we're set to start some animation. So uh, let's select Mia and we'll open up the 2D motion key editor. And we have two sections in here, the image view and the hierarchy view. And they both kind of react the same. If you select, say the right hand, the right hand bone is selected. If you select the right forearm, you'll notice it's also selected down the timeline, which is kind of handy, especially when you're trying to find uh, bones and move them around during animation. Uh, the image view does the same thing. Uh, over here, the one I use a lot here is the stretch bone, where you can push out a, a foot or you know stretch out an arm or something. Uh, and then your keys can be set as a full body or uh, as a single, like a selected part. So on frame one or frame zero, I always set like a full body key. That way then I know the pose is set and the character's ready for animation. So what I'm going to do is line up uh, Mia to match the uh, animated clip and I know the hip needs to be flipped so we can do that easily in the 2D motion key editor by flip uh, hip. I'm going to set the full body key so just set key and that's all set down the timeline. So once that full body is on I'm, I'm select uh, create the pose and then after that I do single keys a selected part for each one. So in this I'm just going to go through how I set my keys. Um, normally what I do is there's a girl dancing. So normally what I'll do is I'll look for the extremes. So I'll start with uh, the very extreme uh, keys. Then I'll do the breakdowns and then I'll do uh, the in-betweens and then I'll take a look at like facial movements and all that sort of stuff. But right here what I'm going to do, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to find what's the next motion what's the most uh, visible motion the the furthest from the from each pose that is like a follow through so i'm just going to unlock uh, mia here 
and just raise her up. So what I'm doing is I'm finding, I'm just setting that pose. What I always do is on the first key, I will always set a, a full body key. And then uh, when I'm setting the keys after that, uh, I will always just set like a selected part. So for me, that's just the easiest way to uh, to animate. I find it's it's convenient. It's really it's handy. And you're not if you move a whole body part on each extreme, then you're kind of you're locked in. It's it's harder to make those subtle movements later on. Just gonna flip that foot around there. So I've just set all the keys, uh, I've done all the breakdowns um, and I've put in some subtly some face movements and here they are dancing together. So now we have uh, Mia all animated out and um, what we can do is duplicate her animation which is really handy so if we go over to animation. Um, go into custom motion press that little plus key and it'll save her animation out and you can apply that to another character which is really handy in a situation like this where you got characters dancing and um, so what technically what you could do is you can load up your other characters uh, let me have a look yeah let's pick the, this guy the abominable snowman and we'll pop him on to the timeline as well and we'll just place him and again before you move him make sure you're at frame zero and take her animation, drop it onto him, and there we have them all dancing. Now you probably have to go in and make some subtle changes and you know whatever adjustments to the character but technically you've got you could have a bunch of characters in here all dancing away which I think is pretty cool. So we're going to get to the really cool part of this, uh, the part that really excites me which is transparent video. Now I want to render out Mia uh, on our own. I'm going to get rid of the movie clip because I'm going to do some uh, compositing in an external program. So here we have a uh, render video. So we go to dot uh, movie file. Make sure transparent video is selected. And then here you've got your frame rate. It's set at 30 frames a second. And we get our file size, we've got our range, and we're gonna just export that. And as against uh, previous versions, you used to have to render out uh, like tons of PNGs, and it was just, it's, it's a big cumbersome thing to manage. Here, with a push of a button, we're gonna render out a movie file with Mia in it. Uh, I'm gonna bring in the animation that uh, I rendered out as a movie file. Um, here we go, open that up there, and drag that into the composition, and it'll set the composition to 1920 by 1080. And here she is dancing away. And you'll notice that there's nothing around her, she's transparent, so I'm just gonna create just a, a shape and drop it onto the timeline, just drag something around here, it doesn't really matter, I'm just, I'm just demonstrating the fact that you know, you can put this in front uh, or behind Mia just by dragging it around. So that's it in front of her, that's it behind her. So it's true transparent video. But the video is rendered out perfectly so there's nothing, no artifacts around the character. So with that done, um, what I'm going to do is bring in the movie clip um, of the dancer. We'll just get it lined up. Just drag it out and fit it in the screen where I want it. Because we're gonna, this will be the final render, so we gotta make sure it's in the right place. About there. Let's resize it there a little. There we go. And there they are, dancing away together again. So we just move me around, get her into the right position as well. And the reason I'm setting things up in here is because. 
I want to uh, add some effects uh, to uh, Mia. I want, I'm going to light her. I'm gonna, she stands on the girl's foot at one point. I want to put in some of uh, Dex effects stuff in there and uh, make it a bit more fun, a bit more entertaining. So I'm going to uh, render out a bunch of these effects uh, that I've created, like this one, oomph, and uh, for standing on her toe and for electricity flying out of their fingers and all sorts of stuff. So rather than, again, rather than rendering out a lot of PNGs and being very messy and huge, I'm going to just go to very easily set everything up in Cartoon Animator, make sure the resolution's right, frame count is right, render out the range, and I do this with all my effects now, bring them into After Effects, and you just drop them into the timeline, and it's so easy. And then what we want to do is just line it up for where um, she stands on her toe, and also we want it between the two characters. So here's a great benefit of this. So if you put it behind, you've lost it behind the video, but between Mia and the dancing girl, we can place it and make it look like there's a bit of dimension in it. So I'm just gonna resize it down, place it where I want it. Just bang, stands right there. So move that up. And then when we run it, go. So I'll just do a quick render of this. There, and I'm going to set up a bunch more effects and uh, show you what they all look like when they're rendered out and when they're all set up. So there's a couple of things that uh, I want to do with Mia in this scene uh, also, and that's to set uh, drop shadow. Um, underneath the character, maybe light the character a bit, and you can do this really quickly. I'm going to do it with a shape in After Effects, a circle. Uh, I'm going to drop it under Mia, just under there. And then what I want to do is I'm going to link the shadow uh, to Mia and set it to multiply. That way, then it'll follow her around. Now we can key out it, key it out later. Bring down the opacity. And then I'm gonna put a directional light because the light's coming in from the window here. And you can see it, it's not a huge shadow on the girl. So we're not gonna have a massive shadow on Mia either. But the directional blur should be able to give us what we need, maybe a bit more. Yeah, so what we can do is then just, uh, we can key out uh, where the shadow goes as she dances around the place by just setting very simple keys uh, when she moves by stretching, squashing, and uh, by skewing. And that's our shadow. Okay, so uh, what I'm gonna do now is just uh, add a, a light and kind of get a rim light on her and kind of get a bit of shadow and tone going across the character. And we can do this by turning Mia's layer into a 3D layer in After Effects. So you can see there she's on a plane now and she can be rotated and skewed and um, but what this really allows us to do is add a, a light layer that will affect her on top of this. So in here you go, light. And then we can select any type of light that we want. Um, and all the options then for uh, lighting Mia are inside of that. And you can push it around, change where the light is. You can change the radius. Uh, you could change the type of light. So for me, I'm just going to go to point light. I'm going to just expand that radius. Uh, get the fall off distance. A bit more. And then you can move the light. And just get it exactly where you want it. And get her looking the way you want her to get it to look. And it just kind of brings her into the scene more. And it gives her a bit more dimension. Nice rim light, bit tones at the back. Uh, and kind of blends her with what's going on in the environment a bit more. Kind of nice. I'm just going to show you uh, what, it, their, what this looks like with, uh, with and without the effects. So this is me not lit, not shadowed, no effects. And then I've pre-composed, I've brought in all of my effects and voila. And there we go, boom, smack, pow, oops. And there's all the effects sitting over the live video. 
Yeah, it's kind of cool. So that's the before and after. Before, click, and after. How cool is that? You could do this with any of your videos.